and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Uh, today let's take a look at creating this 3D ice effect uh, in Photoshop CS4. You're going to need Photoshop CS4 extended uh, so you can both create 3D objects and uh, actually work with 3D objects. Uh, so that requires Photoshop CS4 extended or newer. Uh, so that's what we're using here and this is roughly what we're going to make. The beauty of this technique is really you're not going to get the same thing twice. Uh, so if you get something you really like, make sure you save it as sort of something that's in, you know, like a resources folder on your website. Uh, so I'm going to close this here, and we're going to go ahead and go File, New, and create a brand new document. Let's set the width to 720, the height to 420. So we're going to make the height a little taller. Let's go 550 with the height. And uh, then the background contents. In my case, I'm going to say background color because here my background color is black, and I just want this to have a black background. If yours does not have a black background just select the background layer and you know grab black as your foreground color and alt backspace or option return on the Mac and you'll go ahead and fill that so here in Photoshop there are, there are a bunch of ways to create 3d objects you can just create you know basic uh, you know cone cube cylinder yada 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 shapes from your layer you can create new mesh from grayscale, uh, which can give you some very interesting looking uh, 3D shapes. And you can also create uh, 3D postcards um, from layers, uh, which basically is going to convert that layer to a, a, the equivalent of like a, a 3D plane. So you can move it around and, you know, easily add like 3D effects to a layer. You can also just create a new uh, new 3D layer uh, as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer here and we're going to fill this with black. So I'm going to go alt backspace to fill this with black. Uh, our background, that's going to be our background. This layer here that's now filled with black is what's going to actually become our 3D object. So we're going to go filter, render, difference clouds. And this is why I filled the layer with black first. You need to fill your layer with something in order to use difference clouds. And my foreground and background color are both black, so I'm not getting any kind of change. I want my foreground and background color, one to be white, one to be black. So I'm just going to hit D to set that back to the default. And I'm going to go filter, difference clouds right here. All right, so we get some clouds. I'm going to hit Command or Control F to give me another set and another and another. And I'm going to keep going until I get something that looks interesting. That looks kind of cool. Now we're ready to go ahead and convert this to a 3D object and let Photoshop work its 3D magic uh, on this object. And that's very easy to do. All we need to do is go 3D, uh, new mesh from grayscale, and we're going to go with cylinder. So that's 3D, new mesh from grayscale, cylinder. And Photoshop's going to go ahead and churn this thing out. It's going to do a little bit of processing. And what we get is this pretty crazy looking, you know, completely abstract shape. I had no idea beforehand this is what this is going to look like. So you know when you do this every time you do it it's going to be something different because that render difference clouds is always gonna be a little bit different and you know you can always mix it up obviously and the next step is gonna be go going window 3d and up pops the 3d panel here and what we want to do is we want to work with the lights so I'm gonna choose this little light bulb up here and specifically, we want to work with infinite light 1, 2, and 3 here. And I just want to choose a color for this. You see we have a color. So with infinite light 1, I'm going to come up here. Well, I don't want to double click it. Just single click it. And wait for it to pro. There we go. Uh, single click it. And we're going to choose kind of a brighter blue. You can see now we're getting those blue ridges. Okay, great. Let's go to infinite light 2 here. It's just going to you know kind of map that onto there. Infinite light 2. And again, choose a nice blue color, maybe a lighter blue. All right, and then we're going to go to infinite light three, and let's check to see what this does here. All right, that's just coloring the very highlights um, of this shape. So we're going to go with a pretty light blue. There we go. And if you want to add even more color, you can even add another light by just hitting this little new button. And we're going to choose a point light. And you can see we've got this pretty crazy light going on. Here's the point light up here. And we can choose a new color. Right now it's white, which kind of looks interesting. But what happens if we give it like a nice light blue? All right, it just adds another cool effect 
uh, to this whole thing. So we're going to stick with that. Um, now, depending on the shape you get, this may or may not look good adding an, uh, another light. So it might just be something you want to kind of play around with. All right, another thing that um, I should mention is with these lights, you also have this little intensity slider. You can actually make the color more intense. Um, you can see it's just going to kind of lighten it up, liven it up a bit. I actually like that there with that light, but I'm not going to go too, too crazy with it. I'm going to leave it as is. But with this 3D panel, there's really a lot of playing around you can do, a lot of working with lights, and I'm not even going to get into nearly everything you can do with this 3D panel because there's a lot you can do with it and working with 3D objects. We might save that for a future tutorial or tutorials. Now comes a pretty cool part. This is where we really start to kind of sharpen things up and really make this look more like, uh, you know, a mini iceberg or ice. Uh, you know, still maintaining a 3D look. I'm actually going to drag the 3D panel right back here into its dock. We don't really need it uh, anymore, if I recall correctly. We might pull it out in a little bit just to play around with a couple settings, but I think we're done with it. Uh, what I want to do now is use these 3D tools over here and near the bottom of the tools panel to rotate this. But I don't just want to rotate my view. See, these tools on the bottom are all view tools. You're simply rotating your point of view uh, you know, it's almost like moving yourself instead of moving the 3D object. I actually want to move the 3D object, so I'm going to use the tools here on top. 3D rotate, roll, uh, pan, slide, scale tool. I'm going to try the rotate tool first. We're going to try to just kind of pull this guy down until he's about like that. I'm actually going to try to roll it because this part that's on top now, I actually want to be underneath. Oh, we don't need the roll tool for that. What am I thinking? Uh, let's go again with the rotate tool and just start pulling it toward myself. Here we go. Give Photoshop time. Give Photoshop time. It is a labor intensive process. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. And now I need the, the 3D roll tool to go ahead and just pull it back that way. Pull it down on the right side there a little bit. Level it right out. All right, there we go. Great. So now we basically have our shape the way we want it. And we're ready to go ahead and make it look a little more like ice. I'm actually going to tilt it a little more. There we go. Kind of like that. Now that I've done that, it's time to go ahead. And what we want to do is duplicate this layer. Hotkey for that is Command or Control J. We now have two 3D layers. What I want to do now is select this layer beneath and control click the thumbnail. That's going to load it as a selection. Okay, you see we have a nice rough selection there. And then I'm going to hit Command or Control J again. And an interesting ha thing happens when you select that part of your 3D shape, basically the entire thing, and duplicate the layer. You get this interesting shape here. So that's pretty cool. And that's going to sort of be the basis of our ice effect. Remember, we still have this colored 3D layer on top of it. So we're going to get to that uh, in just a moment. And the whole idea is to use this layer here to color this layer here. So we kind of get this shape with the color of our 3D object. So let's go ahead and do that. What I want to do is select this layer on top and just try setting its blend mode to color. And that's going to move me off screen. So I'm going to collapse my color panel here. And right here we have color. So do that and you can see we get this interesting effect. Very, very cool. What I want to do is just select both of these layers, and I'm doing that by selecting the layer on bottom, holding my shift key and selecting the layer up top, and then just hitting command or control E. That's going to merge those layers together. We have just rasterized the 3D layer. It is no longer live 3D. This layer right here is no longer live 3D. It is just pixels as we see it. As far as Photoshop's concerned, it is all just fl a flat image. But it really is kind of lifeless, so we're going to uh, attempt to uh, boost uh, it's contrast and brightness and stuff like that. So I'm going to go Command or Control J to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to set it to, let's try screen. That kind of makes it, you know, whiter and more icy looking. I'm going to duplicate this layer again. We don't want it to be set to screen in this case, though. We want to try setting it to overlay. You can see we really get this nice rich blue color. Maybe a little too strong. Let's try soft light, and that's pretty cool. Um, and maybe to top things off, if it still doesn't have the kind of, you know, oomph and life that you want, Go ahead and go image, or excuse me, layer, new adjustment layer, uh, curves. And when we do this, we're going to check off use previous layer to create clipping mask. This is going to essentially mask this, this lighting and color effect that we're about to create only to the shape of this 3D layer. So we're going to say, yeah, go ahead, create that clipping mask. You see that? So 
this curves effect is only going to be applied within this selection here. So that's great because watch, I can do stuff like brighten this up and you can see my background is not getting any brighter. So that's, that's really great. What I want to do is just increase contrast by creating a simple S curve like so. And then I want to go ahead into the red channel and just pull down on the reds. And what that's going to do is it's going to introduce uh, some cyan. But where I really want to do my work is over here in the blue channel. I want to boost the blues a bit, make it, make it much bluer, and boost the light blues by pulling up on the higher part of my little line in the curve area. So there we go. We have a nice contrasting looking curve right here. And that's it. That's how we create this 3D ice object in Photoshop. Again, you can add more layers beneath. Uh, you can go ahead, let's, we could just duplicate the screen layer to brighten that up even more if you wanted. You could go ahead and add an overlay layer if you wanted. You could do all kinds of things. Uh, play around to really tweak and fine tune your ice effect. You could add some gloss to it. You could go in with the dodge and burn tools and touch it up. There's all kinds of things you can do because this is no longer a live 3D shape. However, we have still saved our live 3D shape underneath all of this mess right here. So if we wanted to go back and rotate it, maybe change the way it looked, we could do that with ease. Just by editing this layer down here using the 3D tools, we could even go ahead and open up the 3D panel and uh, you know, edit the lights, edit the color. If we wanted to make this green instead of blue, go ahead and change some colors and you're ready to roll. So that's it, a very simple 3D object, uh, 3D ice object. It's more or less an abstract iceberg object. Uh, that's how I create it here in Photoshop and thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Mm -hmm.